Hello guys and welcome to Gina's Natural Way. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the reading, which is the fervent. Um, if you are watching this and you're part of the book club, well, if you're not part of the book club, feel free to join. It's a godly women book club. Um, I do want to say one thing. I would really appreciate if you guys would participate more. Um, like I have all my other clubs. I do have a lot of clubs. They sustain themselves. Like even if I don't put some stuff up in a few days, the club still goes on. You know what I'm saying? Um, but on the book club, I'm like the only person that almost posts. And I want you guys to feel comfortable to post things. You guys, you may post book scriptures, like um, little quotes, um, prayers, whatever. I mean, just bless other people as well. So I don't want and answer questions, you guys, to like, this is a, a, a Bible reading. Like it's a club where we're supposed to ask questions, answer questions on the actual book and stuff like that and the Bible. So I want us to become closer and that's how we can become closer too. Um, because we have to talk, we have to communicate with each other, you guys. Okay. This week is on your fears. If I were your enemy, I'd magnify your fears, making them appear and intimidate you with enough worries until avoiding them becomes your driving motivation. I will use anxiety to cripple you, to paralyze you, leaving you indecisive, clinging to safety and sameness, always on the defense because of what might happen. And when you hear the word faith, all I want you to hear is unnecessary risk. A fun road trip to Austin, Texas, just me, my big sister, Crystal, and one of our closest friends, Shauna. Crystal was driving and I was in the front passenger seat and Shauna was in the back talking about something she'd been thinking about doing, but why she couldn't do it and how she felt bad about not doing it, but why it didn't matter because she could never do it anyway, on and on like that. Crystal and I looked ahead out of the windshield, sipping our lattes and listening and nodding <laughs> and rationing and listen to her rationalize. And when we tried to press her on what her real hesitations were, she kept talking and rationalizing and deflecting and defending until she finally nearly snapped our heads back with the re really unexpected, highly exasperated, because I'm not ready. Road noise, the lum hum of air coming from the air conditioned vents. Because I'm scared. Allow me to step back for a second and do a better job of introducing Shauna to you. Because if all you knew about her was what I just described, I'd be giving you the complete wrong impression. My friend is a devoted wife of nearly 20 years and a highly accomplished, highly intelligent mother of three. Tremendously adept at managing a full household, dynamic, outspoken believer. Trains hardcore for marathons, and I don't even know how many of those things she's already run. She's full of energy, but with tenderness too, as well as a knack for giving people spot on insights about their deepest needs and toughest questions. And as a licensed counselor who runs her own business, she's the kind who gets sent referrals for when people hit a dead end through all their other routes of care and treatment and simply aren't going to make it unless they see someone of Shauna's caliber. She's the best in her field and in every other way too. And in the months leading up to our outing, however, the Lord had been fairly obvious and directing and leading her to start cutting back on her caseload and start focusing on doing some writing cataloging all the stellar wisdom she's been dishing out for all these years and collecting it into resources that can multiply her ministry of counsel and encouragement to who knows how many others. Her husband had told her, honey, just do it. We'll be all right financially. I believe in you and in what you can do. And I truly want you to follow the Lord on this. We'll do what we need to do to make it happen. I'm totally behind you. So everything was lining up. Every indication on her spiritual radar was tracking with this new direction. But only one problem, she was scared. Now, master's degree, business owner, college teacher, even a woman like her can get scared. And now in the car, on the way back from a weekend with friends, tears rolled down her cheeks as she chronicled her internal struggle. What if I can't do it? What if I make all these arrangements? What release my client list, sit down in front of the computer and nothing comes out? Nothing makes sense. 
Worse yet, what if I do get some stuff written? Start to feel pretty good about it, but nobody likes it. Or what if they're too nice to say they don't like it, but I can tell from what they do say and don't say that I failed miserably. What if no avenues crop up where I can get my work published or distributed? Even if I can, what if people don't find it helpful or useful or any different from anything else they've read? What if the financial adjustments we'll need to make in order for me to give to the means of my kids will have to end up in some activities that they love? What if it all ends up being a total waste of time and energy? What if it's all just some sort of ego trip or head game? Something I'm projecting into myself. I'm not ready yet. I'm just scared, y'all. This is really good because if you are like a business person or this is probably ministering to you, um, this is good because it's definitely ministering to me. Um, it says she sniffled. She wiped away a few runway tears. I wanted to console her, to reach back and rub her knee, to say, there, there, I understand. But in that moment, other words started coming out. Instead, before I'd really processed what they might sound like, spoken with a fierceness and intensity that shocked even me. Do it anyway, I said, spinning around almost a full turn from my front seat position, looking directly into her face. Shauna, if the only reason you aren't moving forward is fear, then don't you see that the enemy is trying to paralyze you? He's the one behind this. Don't sit there and let him do that. Don't let him stop you from moving forward. I don't care how afraid or how not ready you may feel. Obey God anyway. She stared at me blankly and I stared back and both of us stunned by my indignation. The fact is I was mad and I still am mad at the enemy for messing with my friend like that. And I'm mad at him for messing with you too and with me, with all of us. And anytime I begin seeing that the only thing keeping me from receiving everything God wants me is the fear tactic the enemy is using against me. It makes me mad. I start feeling a holy indignation rolling up over my shoulders and picking me up from behind because if he's working that hard to keep me from moving forward, there must be some blessings or beauty from heaven he's trying to di divert me from and I'm just not having it, not anymore, not from him and I hope you're not either. <laughs> That's good because think about it, if it's not going to be anything, the devil just, he's going to be like, oh, she ain't about to do nothing anyway. He ain't going to try to stop you. He's going to be like, oh, she, she good. But if the, the harder he fights you on it, you better know some people are going to be blessed out of it. Whatever it is you want to start or your business or whatever you're trying to do or God wants you to do. So the fact is this fear is one of Satan's primary schemes for crippling God's people. Now, I'm not talking about legitimate concern. I'm talking about the projective warnings of wisdom and godly counsel. I'm talking about fear, insistent worry, up all night anxiety, worst case scenarios becoming the only probabilities that you can think about. Fears like these, instead of simply raising our blood pressure, ought to set off some fire alarms. Why am I feeling so paralyzed like this? We clearly know from the scripture that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sour mind. Second Timothy one and seven. So whenever you sense a spirit of fear invading any particular area of your life, you can know by process of elimination that it's not coming from God. OK, because God don't give us a spirit of fear, which leaves only one other spiritual place it could be originating from, which ought to make you wonder why it is there. Aren't you at least a little bit curious why he's trying to keep you from experience? Well, what is he trying to keep you from experiencing? I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the story of Moses and the children of Israel pinned up against the waters of the Red Sea while the Egyptian Pharaoh and his armies were bearing down hard from behind. Israel was fast in the process of being surrounded by people whose nation had brutalized them and their ancestors for four long horrendous centuries. No escape. And the only direction that wasn't swarming his enemy, the one path God was directing his people to go, lay straight ahead through the sea. So these two million Hebrews had every reason to be terrified, mortified, really. There was no swimming out of this one. And yet in the face of such impossible circumstance, with the odds so heavily stacked against them, and with no indicator of the miracle that God had planned, Moses said to the people, do not fear. In Exodus 14 and 13, his very first instruction to them was don't be afraid. 
Notice that Moses wasn't telling them not to feel fear. The prospect of looming death will just kind of do that on its own. But fear is a natural human response to a lot of things. A Red Sea moment being one of them. So he knew they would feel fear, but he was telling them not to wallow in it. Not to choose it. Not to make friends with it. Not to entertain it. Engage it. Because if they did, they risked not sticking around long enough to experience the stunning miracle their God was about to perform. And even more, they risked not getting to the other side, to the promised land, to the land of milk and honey, to destiny. Oh, so that's what the enemy wanted. Fear to keep them from obtaining. That's what they'd all be singing about in the next chapter. While Pharaoh's army was being swallowed whole by the waters in Israel. And now just a hop and a skip from from it and that's what he hopes fear will keep you from obtaining your destiny that's so good because sometimes we can't really see what's ahead if we would just go forward with what God wants us to go forward with we don't see what's on the other side like they knew it'd be something good for them but they couldn't help it they were too afraid you know what I mean but the enemy obviously he knew what he knew something was coming let me say this. I do know firsthand how the despair of intimidation feels when it's strangling you around the neck. I know the kind of paralysis that can harden around you when you're scared to death by going through with something you've committed to and you just don't think you've got what it takes to do it. I've known these times like you, perhaps when we all feel all we feel like doing is pulling the drapes, climbing back under the covers and wishing the next few hours or days or weeks would just Please just go away. But whether you need a gentle hand today, reaching out to hold yours, or if like my sweet friend Shauna, you could use a little tough love right now to shake yourself awake from the stupor of all those excuses, the prescription is still the same. Do not be afraid. The issue of fear is so well known and important to God that more than 300 times in scripture, he tells his people in one form or another, do not be afraid. Fear not. Do not fear. Look it up. It's everywhere. You know, those times when you're searching high and low for just that one verse for God to tell you what you want, like what, what should you do? Well, there's 300 of them and they're all saying that same thing. Don't be afraid afraid it's the enemy telling you be very afraid it's the kind of junk he's been feeding you lately 20 million reasons why you can't why you can't kick the habit maybe you're struggling with cigarettes or drinking or uh, whatever why you can't stand up and lead a bible study mm. why you can't help start that inner city ministry not qualified enough for that job why you can't do this, why you could never do that, be crazy to even think about doing other than that. Why not? Might take too much time, not to mention the pressure of the germs. Do I really want to risk the rejection of being told no? Don't I realize what I'd be giving up in terms of security and salary and insurance benefits? What would people think if I did something so audacious, something out of my normal routine and pattern? Wouldn't I just be opening myself up to criticism and catty comments? What about my food allergies, my fear of flying, all my other various intolerance? Are those the kind of speed bumps and roadblocks he's been laying in front of you seemingly all your life? He's just full of it, full of excuses, invested in cramming you full of fear. Why? Because fear is the antithesis of faith and faith is what allows you to step foot on the soil of your destiny. Hear me out and hear me good. I'm about to write a long run on sentence, but I want you hanging on every word. If God has given you clear direction, like he gave the children of Israel, or like he's given to my friend Shana, direction that's confirmed by his written word and by the sounding board of wise, godly counsel. And your only real reason for resisting him is because you're afraid of what following him down this path might mean or cost at an entail. Then you're not only on the threshold of being disobedient, you're about to miss an opportunity to give God some fresh new glory by doing what he wants you to do, which is the true impetus behind his invitation for you to join him on this scary adventure in the first place. In fervent prayer, we discover something. Our God is fearless. And because he is fearless, we can be fearless too. When his presence is with us and going before us, no red sea should phase us 
or give us pause. So despite your hesitation, say yes, walk on, have faith and fear not. Y'all, this is, this is really good. You know, I have to tell you, um, I, when I started this book club, you know, this book club thing, and just even reading this book, you know, I started a lot of Gina's way stuff, you know, that didn't bother me, but it was like this, kind of bothered me i was like i don't know what if people don't like it what if you know i had a lot of what ifs but to be honest i almost feel like something the holy spirit just took over me and it was like i just woke up and i was like did i really do that did i really just say that did i really you know because this is not me i mean this is not me sure i've ministered at churches and things like that but youtube could be kind of cruel you know what i mean i deal with it on my other channel i've got a lot more subscribers it's bigger you know you deal with a lot of various people and, and, and to be honest, Christians, we are the worst. <laughs> Y'all we're so critical of each other. We're like just ridiculous. Um, but it wasn't in the numbers and, you know, compared to my other channel, of course, these videos don't even get as much as over there. So it's not money. It's not like, Oh, I'm, I'm going to get, you know, money from this, but it was like, okay, I need to be true and I need to do what God wants me to do. And I did it and I'm glad I did because I met a lot of you guys. A lot of you guys have been ministered to how you've been telling me. Um, all right, let's go ahead and do the call to prayer. It says, God wouldn't tell us not to be afraid or tell us to us so often. If you didn't really fully realize that fear, worry, anxiety, queasiness, cold feet, sweaty palms, dry mouth, and racing heartbeats are our first manual, natural reaction to some of the challenges of following him, especially those like most that don't come with clear step-by-step -step instructions on how to handle every possible hiccup or contingency. The enemy, of course, is aware of this, is always lurking nearby eager to animate and to agitate those concerns of ours. So they keep us up at night and interfere with our ability to think clearly. He even goes a step further, stamping a spirit of fear on the very things he knows are God's best options for us. But God is always there as well, far outranking him in strength to hear our troubled prayers, reaffirm his fearless promises and deliver the next bit of lamplight we need for walking steadily in this direction. Prayer is the difference maker, an invitation for honest, yes, for telling him how you feel, infused with the insurance and fearless confidence that God, that comes from God's promises. Remember these worries of yours. They're not just stray thoughts. They're deliberate strategies, strategies to derail you from your destiny and calling and the way to fight them as your deliberate prayer strategy of your own. And then there's scriptures and it says, as you take these scriptures and get ready to craft your prayer, I thought you want to know that Shauna, she's doing it. And instead of letting fear be the loudest voice in her room, she's able to go back and implement obedience going forward as instructed. She's not the one crying in the back seat no more. She's throwing fear into the back seat and good for her because nobody's telling my Holy Spirit, fuel injected friend that she's not good enough, not ready, not capable, that she can't. Oh yes, she can. So can you. So that is it, you guys, for the scripture on the fears. Here's the question of the week that we're going to answer over on Facebook. If you don't have a Facebook, go ahead and leave the comment. You can leave a comment here. But the question is, what are you supposed to be doing that you're not doing? You know, what, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? What have the enemy has been telling you? You know what I mean? Like, what should you be doing? Like a lot of times we say, you know, God has a great call on us. God says we should be doing this. I should be doing that. When are you going to let it happen? I was saying to the group the other day that there was a 27 year old and this guy was a Christian too. He actually passed away and he was doing a rehearsal of praise and worship. He was a praise and worship singer and he was saying he got to a certain or his wife was saying he got to a certain spot and he was singing and literally just had a heart attack or whatever happened. His heart just stopped. Um, and he was very healthy. He exercised, he worked out, you know, they still don't really know what happened to him. You never know while you're sitting waiting. Oh, when I turn 50, I'll do this. When I turn 60, I'll do this. 
You don't know, and that's why I went ahead and did this book club. You don't know who you'll touch. Even if it's applying for another job, you don't know who you'll touch at that job. You don't know who you'll touch doing what it is that God has called you to do. So it is time to face your fears. It is time to say, you know what, devil? Enough is enough. I'm going to roll my sleeves up and at least I'm going to try. Because it was such a beautiful, beautiful place over there with the land of the milk and the honey. But they just had to get there. They just had to get there. So with that being said, you guys, I'm going to meet you over on the book club and think about it and then answer the question. Don't wait, you guys. Don't wait. There's somebody you could be impacting on today. Hey guys.